Hello, my name is Matt Max, and this is the episode that I dreaded the most because I cannot really show you the build process because those parts you see here are extremely better printed and I haven't gotten around printing better ones and I don't want to pull them apart because I think I cannot put them together anymore. But I try to explain you what to do step by step anyway. So I'm going to take this part, it's your X idler and you have to insert your two linear bearings. That's going to be really difficult, but what you can do is you can use your lighter to heat it up here and here to make it a little bit softer, a little bit softer, not really soft. If you heat it up too much, then you will have a deformation that will never go away. But if you make it a little bit softer, it's a little bit easier to get them in. Next, you have to build this, uh, this pulley right here. So I didn't really have the right screw. There's a nut trap on the other side. There you can put in an M4 nylock nut. And then it's just a big M4 washer, normal M4 washer, your two bearings, normal M4 washer and a big M4 washer. Those M4, normal M4 washers, you have to be careful. If you feel them, if you look at them and if you feel them, they have a smooth side and they have a rough side. The smooth side should point in the direction of the bearings, otherwise the bearings might not turn smoothly. If you do not have a screw long enough, you can drill a hole through here and then you can put a nylock nut in there. But it's not good because you have quite the lever and the part is not made for that. Apart from that, you have two more nut traps, but you do not really have to do it. Those are there for, uh, for the compression of those bar clamps to hold the smooth rods in place. But they don't really move at all anyway. But if you want to put it in, put it in now. So now for the more difficult part. First of all, you take your threaded rod and an M stop shaking. And you take an M8 knot and you screw it on, in, on there a little bit. And then you try to push it in the nut trap at the lower end. And it has to go all the way in. It's really important. It has to go all the way in. If it doesn't really go all the way in, you just get it out again and use our old lighter trick. Heat it up a little bit. It's going to take longer than I'd show you right here. So heat it up for a bit and then you can shove it in. But it has to be straight, right? It has to be pushed all the way in, that's really important. If you do not push it all the way in, you're going to have problems. Okay, so unscrew the thread rod again. And we add another nut to it and we heat it up again. This is the nut that goes in from the top. So again, you push it in, it has to be, like the upper side of the nut has to be flush with the upper end of this shaft. So then you just pull it out again and you need about two centimeters of length there and then you take your that excess spring and this part is probably the most difficult part of the wall build. You have to push this in. Uh, that is easier if you have a belt. Uh, you can put the uh, thread rod on your belt buckle and then just pull the plastic parts toward you. Or apart from that, you can use a wooden surface and push it down on the wooden surface. You need quite a lot of force. And then when you have pushed it all the way in, uh, you will need multiple attempts. If you push it all the way in so that the, that the nut is flush with the upper side of the shaft, like here, okay? Then you have to keep pushing You have to keep pushing, and then you have to turn it in a clockwise direction. Okay, so now it's all the way in. Continue push it down and screw it in a clockwise direction. So it screws into the lower nut. All right, you need a little bit of force right here. If you do it right, you end up like this. So it has it's flush on the top side, it's flush on the lower side. And then you just continue to screw it through. Uh, screwing this through, that's a lot of work. What I like to do is I like to get a drilling machine and put the thread rod into the drilling machine and that's going to make it a lot easier. 
This is also a good moment to apply some Lopricon to it. Because it's important that those rods turn as smoothly as possible, because those are the motors that need the most torque to turn the rods, and you have two motors on one Apollo, so you cannot really apply too much, uh, too much current to it, so they actually do not have that much torque. So you want it to go as smooth as possible. So again, if it's too slow for you, you can use an electric drill and attach it to the threaded rod, and then everything works a little bit faster. Okay, just be careful. Those things have a lot of torque. Okay, so I'm just going to put it in once so that the lubricant is everywhere. Careful, again, you can easily ruin your machine. And then you pull it out again. You want about a hand width left uh, sticking out the lower side. It's probably not enough. So let's see. Yeah, that's about enough, maybe a little bit more. Yeah, that's good. Now for the really, really embarrassing part. <laughs> Don't judge me by what you see right now, okay? Like, the print stopped about three times printing this part. So, this is the X model bracket. You need to find your second ribbon cable, okay? This ribbon cable goes through here. There are two nut traps in the inside. I c again, I kind of pulled it apart, I'm sorry. On the inside there are two nut traps. This you have to attach first. This belt clamp you have to attach first. Before you insert the motor. And then you thread your rim cable through it and you split six wires from it. Okay, so you end going to end up with, let's see, 14 here and 6 here. Four of those cables you have to solder to your motor, and two of them you have to solder to one of your end stops. <clears throat> here you have to use wooden screws to actually attach it because there are no nut traps. For the motor, if you... So here you have to attach your polypropylene sheet as well. The cable is going to be like this. So the polypropylene sheet has to be on the inside to it to enforce the minimum bend radius. So the same is true for this small cable, right? This is going to bend like this. And then you have to attach the ribbon cable to this female plug. That is something I really cannot show you because those things break apart when you pull them apart again. But it's really easy. You just lay the rib cable across it, and there is basically a lower part, a middle part, and an upper part. You put the rib cable in, and then you just push the middle part in really, really, really firmly. It's going to be require a lot of force, but there are knives that cut through all of the cables and make contact with all of the wires inside your rib cable. It's pretty self-explanatory once you did it once. Okay, it's actually not difficult. So again, strip on the inside, strip on the inside, right? The strip is always on the inside of the band. Probably have to fasten it with a little bit of tape like I did right here. So after you did this, it's the same process you did with the other one, put the nut into the bottom, then I'm just going to try to get the right length. Okay, again, the top nut has to be flush against the end of that shaft. And then you just push the spring in. For the motor, by the way, I've forgotten to show you. The motor, there's a lid, like a little lip. You cannot just push the motor in. You have to kind of rotate it in. So that that's just a small heads up for you. Okay, so now again, this is the uh, difficult part. You need a lot of force. And maybe, you know, sometimes the spring gets jammed and you just have to pull it out again. Sometimes it helps when you rotate the spring around. But it is possible. It is definitely possible. Just need a lot of patience and quite some force. 
Those springs, by the way, are there so there's no backlash in the z-axis. Uh, basically, it keeps the top not so that it cannot rotate. Because otherwise, when you would just have lowered your machine, uh, it would take like one tenth of a millimeter or so until it starts going up again. You don't want that to happen. So again, when it's flush to the top side, again you screw it in until it reaches the bottom, uh, catches the bottom nut. And again. And again, I'm going to use an electric drill to make it a little bit faster. We want about a hand width poking out the bottom. I actually forgot to apply a lubricant right here, which is bad. Again, you want to, uh, to apply a lubricant and then, you know, screw it in all the way once to make sure that the lubricant is evenly distributed anyway. So basically, you should have the same length poking out as the bottom of both of your uh, both of your x-axis parts, but it's not super, super important. So now for the assembly of the x-axis. So we need our smooth rods and we need our X carriage. So you just push the smooth rods in like this. The linear bearings come uh, go to the inside. And then you just push the smooth rods in right here. You have to be careful in this step because you have quite a big lever. Uh, if you're not careful, then uh, you break the part apart. So now we have to add our X carriage. The motor axis is here, that's the front side. It's the same side the belt is attached on the X carriage, okay? So the side the belt is attached at, that's the front side. You just caref carefully slide it on. Really carefully, don't break those linear bearings like I did. <laughs> like this, okay, nice. So this is where you might want to fasten the smooth rods to the X motor bracket. Right, so they cannot move out of the X motor bracket anymore. That would be actually be completely enough. So we can already plug this in. So the part is out of the way. It's also the part where you can screw it in place. But it's not really necessary. Okay, so make sure the smooth rods are pushed all the way in. Again, that if you want to fasten the smooth rods, you should fasten them now, and you should fast. You should use the clamps at the X motor uh, X motor bracket. So again, linear bearings to the inside and push on the idler. The reason you don't want to fasten the smooth rods on the idler right now is because you have to be able to adjust the width of the X axis to make sure that it actually fits when you mount the Z axis later on. And that is how you mount the x-axis. So you can already kind of lazily put the belt around here. We, we won't fasten it yet. We do that later. But that is how you build the x-axis of the Mendel 90. My name is Pete Max. Thanks for watching this admittedly a little bit shitty episode. And tune in next time when we're going to finish this machine.